Some didn't learn the difficult reality of this path. They thought that Sulh al-Hudaybiyah would be their detour. And they use it to justify their failure, their chickening out, and their fostering stances. They use it to open the door of maslaha for everything. They use it to dilute wala and bara. They use it to compromise on the principles of tawheed and the principles of this deen. They use it to justify embracing the shirk of democracy. They use it to permit kufr constitutions in the replacement of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They use it to justify certain treaties with kuffar in general. And they use it to justify certain treaties and stances of their tawaghir against the muwahideen. They use it in giving in to attain the pleasure of the West. They use it to patch the unpatchable tughyan of their tawaghit. This story and seerah and more so Islam need to be taken as a whole. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in part and reject the rest, which is a quality of the Jews? You can't be selective in the way you choose the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the hadith and seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not only must you take Islam as a whole, which every Muslim and every beginner talib of ilm should know. But at least take the facts of the story as a whole. Not only do they take snippets out of it, but they take the snippets and distort their meaning and take them out of context, alleging that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa gave in on the principles of their deen, and by doing that, they open the door for compromise on the principles of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anyone. Before I mention the tone of izzah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this story itself. Let's go back six years before this story. This event occurred after the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established a nation in Medina. Before this, where was he? He was in Mecca. Sallallahu alayhi wa He was in Mecca, he was weak, and he was outnumbered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Sahaba of this matter. وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ أَنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ مُسْتَضْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تَخَافُونَ أَنْ يَتَخَطَّفَكُمُ النَّاسِ فَآوَاكُمْ وَأَيَّدَكُمْ بِنَصْرِهِ وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Remember, when you were vastly and greatly outnumbered and oppressed. The Sahaba were few, oppressed in the land. They were in constant fear of being attacked or kidnapped. If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't compromise the least bit, when his Sahaba, his beloved companions, were under the whips and floggings of Quraysh, under the torture, and abuse in the hot sun of Mecca, you really think he's going to start compromising on principles after he was established with a nation and a military? If he didn't compromise when he was a one-man ummah facing the globe, do you think he'd start compromising now that he has right near him and around him over 1,400 men begging to die in his defense? Not only did he not compromise on the principles of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his weakest times, but he wasn't silent on declaring the principles of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, he rejected all offers of compromise on the principles of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do? لو تدهنوا فيدهنون They wish. They wish you, want, you would compromise. So they compromise as well. What do? What do? The heads and leaders offered him lucrative offers to compromise. 
They offered him to be silent. They offered some stipulations. This was when, when he was weak in Mecca. Did he accept any of that? The Quran warned the Messenger وسلم, not to sympathize with any of their offers or to ever compromise. Beware that they turn you away from some of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed or sent upon you. They wish the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa would leave some of what he has of his principles and they would leave some of what they have. They get along and call it a day. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ The verse, وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدِّلُوا فَيُدِّلُونَ means don't give in by saying. Don't give in by action. Don't even give in by being silent. Declare the truth. Don't compromise even in being silent. As Sa'di said, this is when the mushrikeen asked the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to be silent about the deficiency of their Lord and they too will be silent about him as well. When was this? When Bilal and Ammar and his family were being flogged and tortured in the hot sun of Mecca. وَلَوْلَا أَن ثَبَّتْنَاكَ لَقَدْ كِتَّ تَرْكَنُوا إِلَيْهِمْ شَيْئًا قَلِيلًا Had we not made you steadfast, you probably would have inclined to them a little. Al-Qushayri said the meaning, the true meaning of this verse is Allah fulfilled his blessings upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he never inclined towards them and Allah saved him from ever compromising with them. Don't mix mudara with mudahana. We spoke about those in the past. Mudara is being kind. Being kind for da'wah for example. Someone who has a non-Muslim relative. Mudahana is compromising on the deen of Allah and giving in. Ibn Battal al-Maliki, very similar to him, Ibn al-Qayyim said, Mudara is a sunnah and praise. Mudahana is haram and dispraised. We now have al-fiqh al-akbar, which is tawheed. We taught that in the past. We have al-fiqh al-asra, which we're teaching. In furu' al-fiqh. Now, the Zanadiqa developed a third type of fiqh they've been teaching. The fiqh of inbitah. The fiqh of how to make the ummah a bunch of cowards who give in on their principles. The fiqh of how to be surrenderous in your belief. The fiqh of how to maintain your life laying on your stomach in a permanent surrender status for every enemy of Allah in every aspect of your belief that the kuffar criticize, or even if they don't criticize, if you know they might criticize or not like it. The fiqh of how to tailor your Islam according to what every enemy of Allah wants.